just a little behind the scenes while we get started on my live feed over here, guys. Want to say hi? That's great. Hey, everybody. What's up, Batrantil Nation? Here with Dr. Cheng Ron, hi. functional medicine doctor, super smart guy, and we're going to be talking some functional medicine and some SIBO. Yeah, absolutely. I want to get closer so people can hear because the audio is not great. We're just going to go live on my feed. Oops, live. Technical errors, right? Technical errors. Dr. Ron has a pretty impressive following. He's got over 656,000 Facebook followers, does a lot of Facebook Live. He's got a great little studio set up to do this, so I'm learning a lot on how to do all of this. And then later today in Houston, I'm going on KPRC. It's Channel 2. Channel 2 at uh, 1 o'clock. I think I go live on the air. Let's try that again. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Ron. We're live. I want to introduce you. Just get a little closer so people can hear and they want to see our beautiful faces, right? Uh, this is Dr. Kenneth Brown. And uh, he is a gastroenterologist in Plano. Is it Plano? Plano, Texas. Plano, which is, uh, if you guys are not familiar with, with Texas, uh, it's pretty close to Dallas, by the side of Dallas. And, uh, you know, I invited him here because I've been treating a lot of irritable bowel syndrome and SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, as a root cause for a lot of, a lot of different diseases, um, you know, rheumatologic diseases, fibromyalgia, rashes, rosacea, eczema, you name it. And it all starts in the bowel. And this is a gastroenterologist who I can talk very intelligently with uh, about, about these things because um, he's created an, an awesome botanical product that, uh, that I've been using myself, actually, um, for my own irritable bowel issues. And it works fantastic. So um, I just want to talk to you about it. And uh, it's really hard to pronounce the name, but I guess it's Atrantil. Right? Ah, uh, Trontil, like, ah, my belly's better. Ah, okay. Trontil. <laughs> uh, how, how'd you come up with the name? Well, that's uh, it's actually kind of an interesting story. When you try and name anything in trade market, yeah. Big Pharma has sort of trademarked everything, so you have to make up the name. Interesting. And we just did a little word lab with all my nurses, and everybody started putting things together, and we kind of came up with Ah, uh, Trontil. Ah, uh, Trontil, fantastic. So, so what exactly is Ah, uh, Trontil? So Atron Seal is unlike anything else out there. It's actually made up of three ingredients that work together to get rid of the SIBO. First one is peppermint leaf, not the oil because we wanted the polyphenols with it. Second one is actually the Cabracho Colorado, and that's the one that a lot of people have never heard of. And that's the big workhorse. That's a large polyphenol tannin that goes in and soaks up the gas and gets rid of a particular type of bacteria called an archaeobacter. This archaeobacter is what produces some of the gas called methane, and then the third ingredient, called concretry, comes in and shuts off the methane production. So, three things that it does, actually. Okay, so you mentioned a couple of things, and it might be a little too wordy for me and some viewers, but methane, what does methane have to do with irritable bowel syndrome? So what we found is that when you actually have bacteria growing where it shouldn't, and you eat, the bacteria can break down the food before you can, and if one of the types of bacteria is called an archaeobacter, it can produce methane. The problem with methane is, is that it slows everything down. It works like a local paralytic or it makes everything stop moving. That allows more bacteria to grow. And that's why a lot of people that have this have chronic issues for a very long time. Does that include the bloating and um, bloating after you eat, right? Or belching after you eat, um, some bowel issues, abdominal discomfort. And so <clears throat> I guess methane is the blame for, for a lot of these different things, right? Um, so. So what your product is that you have a way of targeting this, this, this archaeobacter. And uh, so what you don't know is on my, on my wall right there, um, I have a degree in microbiology from nice. Texas A&M. And, uh, and so what I know about archaeobacter is that it's, it's a really weird organism. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of organelles, right? It doesn't have exactly. a lot of things that are in there. And, you know, the antibiotics that we've been using for, for gut issues like Zyfaxan or metronidazole, these target the ribosome, which is, um, it exists in one of the organelles that's in the bacteria, but archaeobacter doesn't really have this, right? Correct. And is that why it doesn't work? That's exactly, and first of all, now I know why you have 600 and some thousand followers. You are a smart guy. Holy cow, we're getting into it now. Yeah, yeah the archaeobacter is actually in its own kingdom. We have fungus, archaeobacter, then the typical bacteria. Mm -hmm. Modern day antibiotics actually don't work on the, on the archaea species because of exactly what we're talking about. It is a different cell wall. 
The reason why we chose the Cabracho is because it's actually from the bark of a really old tree that has natural defense against Archaeobacter. So that's why that's in there. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because you know I have used Cyphaxan in people with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and it's it's limited. I mean, for some people, it works really really freaking well. Some people are like, I have side effects from it. I don't like it, you know. And and I think the the standard of care, especially in people with irritable bowel syndrome, uh, the constipation predominant are laxatives, right? How do you feel about laxatives? Well, I think that uh, pretty much all treatments out there, including pharmacologic treatments, are essentially some form of laxative. It doesn't really get to the root cause of the problem. Right. And so if we get people to go to the bathroom, but they still feel bloated, you eat, and you feel like you're four months pregnant, which is how a lot of my female patients actually describe the whole process, mm -hmm. it doesn't, uh, that never goes away. So the laxative is just kind of a band-aid to help you go to the bathroom, but not getting rid of the real problem. Right, and you know, from a functional medicine standpoint, I, I typically hate laxatives because it completely alters the microbiome quite a bit, and not for the better, number one. And number two, um, people with laxative can, can, it can induce more gas production as well. Um, but what I like to do is give people uh, something like magnesium citrate. So mm -hmm. magnesium citrate is not really a laxative, but it helps the motility of the gut, right? But what you have, is something that's more interesting because you target the root cause. Like I said, magnesium citrate is just temporary, right? It's, it's just trying to fix the problem temp temporarily so we don't have bowel movements. But what you have is targeting the actual bacteria that causes the methane production, right? Exactly. So we get rid of the bacteria, and from a functional medicine standpoint, these are molecules known as polyphenols, which are the molecules that you'll find in the Mediterranean diet. So what they do is they actually don't get absorbed real well, they get rid of the bacteria, but in the colon, your own colonic bacteria will break it down for beneficial things that you need and decrease your overall inflammation in your body. Gotcha. So I do see a couple people who joined. They're actually physicians. So we're going to go on a physician level and talk about what a polyphenol really is. So polyphenols are from a lot of different vegetables, specific vegetables um, that, that tend to stay in the gut. And one of the mechanisms of you know, what functional medicine docs like to call leaky gut, what everybody else likes to call intestinal malabsorption syndrome, is that there's so much inflammation in the gut, and these polyphenols actually decrease uh, inflammatory, inflammatory uh, cytokines and factors by decreasing something called NF-kappa-beta, and it downregulates IL-1, IL-6, TNF-alpha. And basically, it's a whole lot of mumble jumble seeing that there's going to be a lot less uh, inflammation in the gut. And so what I'm interested to see is that this product may not just help the gut, but can help other issues like skin disorders, for example, which stems from the gut, which stems from that, that inflammatory cytokine. 100%. Disease. In fact, I'm actually of the belief, and I think you probably are also, that um, pretty much all health begins and ends in the gut, but we are now seeing a lot of evidence that autoimmune diseases are all starting because you can have this intestinal permeability that leads to the inflammatory cascade that can cause so I think that by fixing the gut, we can fix a lot of these chronic health issues that are out there. Yeah, you know, abs absolutely. And one of my main targets are people with dementia, especially earlier onset dementia. A lot of these people, <clears throat> they don't really have dementia. They have something called LPS, lipopolysaccharide, which is the outer membrane of gram bacteria that's circulating around in the bloodstream that crosses the blood-brain barrier and causes significant pH uh, imbalances in the brain. And so, you know, something like this will, will help heal the gut so they don't have that bacteria, or bacterial LPS circulating in the bloodstream. It could potentially help these people as well. So I think autoimmune disease, I think dementia, I think people with chronic skin disorders, yeah. the rosacea, <clears throat> people with lupus, you know, I think, I think the, 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 the benefits of this is, is going to encompass a whole lot of, a lot of these other disorders. Um, but, um, but I guess it's not really FDA approved for those <laughs> disorders, but... You know, in the functional medicine world, we don't necessarily, you know, just look at one thing. We think the body is, 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 is all connected, correct? Exactly. And you, using that, I did see that you have Dr. Perlmutter's book out there. I did see him lecture, and he was discussing exactly what you're talking about. LPS creates some of the problems, and then that actually lowers a hormone called BDNF in the brain, which is actually a cell regenerative type hormone. So that may be one of the reasons why that leads to the dementia and the Alzheimer's because you don't have that hormone to help these cells regrow and heal themselves. All right, so we started talking about the gut and now we're leading to the brain. <laughs> so there is a gut-brain axis that, that we really like to act on, but it's really not just about dementia, it's about ADHD, it's about depression, it's about anxiety. It's well, let me about throw out autism also, because now there's evidence for autism, so. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, 
And but but this is exciting for for me. Um, I usually don't promote products a whole lot, but this is exciting for me because it works for me uh, <laughs> remarkably well. And um, the the it's the botanicals, right? And uh, exactly. Botanicals and are there any side effects to this? Well, we haven't really seen uh, direct side effects, but I think you've probably seen this. You know, you can have what's called a die-off reaction in a small percentage of people, and it's all related to that archaeobacter, since it doesn't have the organelles. When they do die, some people feel a little bit like a flu-like symptom. A very small percentage of people can have a little bit of sensitivity to some of the ingredients, but you know, we've been uh, we've helped a lot of people out there, and you know, thank goodness we haven't seen any bad side effects yet, but. As you know, anything can happen. So right, it's a lot less side effects than, than the pharmaceutical medications with the zyfaxin and the metronidazole and uh, erythromycin and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, and I like what you said about the laxatives because you're exactly right. We're messing with the microbiome whenever you do that. And so before we actually went live here, I was picking his brain on a lot of other things that he likes to do, and we were going through each type of magnesium: the ones that cross the blood-brain barrier and help you sleep, the ones that help you go to the bathroom. And so um, that's really exciting that we can use natural things to try and heal the body. No, oh, absolutely. So one, one other thing I want to ask you is, you know, as you were developing this product um, and people were, were, were coming to you with these results, were you surprised at how, how well it worked? Um, well, we, we knew that we had some animal models, and this is actually where we came up with the idea. The aha moment was that uh, my research manager actually was a policy writer for a senator in Iowa, oh, wow. and they were trying to mandate how to decrease methane production in cattle. So we pulled out all that old literature and we went, oh my gosh, we can feed. They were feeding cattle to try and get rid of the methane. And so we had pretty good data knowing that at least um, from a chemistry standpoint, we could do some good. Uh, but yes, when people started coming back in and they were having remarkable results in, the, in, our, in our clinical trials, I was, I was surprised at how well it did work. But when I've met with other chemists, they're like, of course it will, because that makes <laughs> sense. So Right, right. And I have somebody else who's just joined on, and uh, she has family with, uh, with ulcerative colitis. So I want to say a shout out to her. Um, so talk, talk to me. I, have people with, with uh, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, use this and develop benefit from it? So I have a really big IBD practice, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and even microscopic colitis. And almost all my patients actually take this. Oh, wow. Number one, there's a couple things. Um, a lot of people do have bacterial overgrowth. Due to the disease process, it slows things down and can allow bacteria to grow. And then number two, like we mentioned, the polyphenols decrease the inflammatory cascade, right. including some different things like TNF-alpha and things like that. So most of my patients stay on it on a daily basis because they really like the results that they're getting um, by taking it as sort of almost just a daily supplement to help feed okay. the bacteria. My theory is also that we're helping close those intestinal permeabilities by getting rid of the SIBO. Mm -hmm. that that can actually um, decrease the autoimmune cascade. And I think that makes sense because polyphenols is a type of flavonoid, which is a whole class from, from, uh, from different cruciferous vegetables. Mm -hmm. And flavonoids have shown to be significantly beneficial to adhere that, that zonulin protein, which is a protein that adheres the gut together. So uh, therefore decreasing inflammation, decreasing that LPS that gets into the gut, decreasing the bacteria that gets transported into the gut as well. And so, um, you know, for, you know, I heard on, uh, I heard on your interview with uh, Dr. Uh, Chris Kesser mm -hmm. that, you know, during that interview, I don't know who said it, either you or Chris, that people with irritable bowel syndrome have a worse quality of life than people with like end-stage kidney disease and di dialysis and everything like that. Yeah, that's been shown in a lot of studies. I mean, I always kind of tell my patients that if you've got congestive heart failure, you move slower. If you have osteoarthritis, you try not to do anything aggressive. But when your gut isn't working, you can't get away from it. Yeah. You know, you get stuck in traffic going into work and you have to use the restroom immediately. You have very little control over that with what a lot of these people have. The other thing is, something else to mention, people with irritable bowel syndrome tend to have more abdominal pain with it. And we now know that pain is probably related to mast cell release, histamine hitting the nerves. So people tend to have more pain if they have irritable bowel. Uh, they can't get away from their guts, and then they pretty much think of everything about what do I eat today to make sure that nothing happens? How do I get around this? So right, I think absolutely. that's why the quality of life is so tough. Yeah, it's, 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 and it, it takes the joy away from eating foods, right? <laughs> and so <clears throat> I want to just touch one last subject, I promise, I know we're going a little long, about uh, wheat and gluten. Okay? Yes. So, you know, in my practice, we look for wheat-related disorders. I don't call it a, a gluten-related disorder. I call it a wheat-related disorder because 
people can be sensitive to gluten, people can be sensitive to the other peptides that are in wheat, and people can be sensitive to the actual grains who contain a lot of pesticides like glyphosate, right? Yes. And so people who eat wheat and wheat-related products and they bloat, right? How do they respond to this? Well, like this guy right here. I actually have really bad gluten intolerance. Me too. And um, <laughs> so I have found that I can take this with gluten and um, I can actually eat whatever I want to eat. Uh, but if I don't take it with the meal, then I will have bad bloating. I'll have, I'll have one of these digestive issues. I have to run and find a bathroom and all that stuff. But so people with gluten. Now, the really exciting thing is one of the things that we were talking about before this is Dr. Ron uses a lab called Vibrant Wellness that now has the ability to look for zonulin levels and to look for intestinal permeability. I'm pretty excited to start looking at that and figuring out why Atrantil helps those people. Is it that we're blocking zonulin? Is it that we're binding the glyphosate? Is it that um, we're blocking gliadin? I mean, there's a lot of different mechanisms as to why people can have gluten sensitivity. So. Yeah, no, that's, that's remarkable. I don't recommend people eating a loaf of bread if you're gluten intolerant <laughs> and taking this. Um, you want to avoid wheat you know, altogether if you're, if you're gluten intolerant and wheat intolerant. Um, but let's talk about people with, uh, with celiac disease. So people with celiac disease have a very exagger exaggerated inflammatory response to wheat where sometimes they can't even touch it on their skin, mm -hmm. right? Um, are these, are, is th do you think this will be helpful in people with celiac disease? So, you know, we're treading a little lightly there because celiac is a disease and we can't make any disease claims. Um, I do think that people that do have gluten sensitivity, the same mechanism will help people with celiac disease, but I'm not recommending to take this if you have celiac. Celiac is when you actually have an autoimmune response to the gluten. And so this is, a, that's a very, very serious issue. So um, most of my patients that have celiac are on this mm -hmm. um, and more of a safeguard. But right. uh, I'm not telling them to take this and eat whatever they want. So they're on this on a like, daily supplement they sort are, of yeah. thing, just in case they have some sort of cross-contamination, come in contact with soy sauce at a sushi restaurant or something like that, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. And the celiac yeah. people tend to have more SIBO also, keep that in mind. So yeah. you have a lot of celiac people yeah, that aren't even existence. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, absolutely. Well, that's it for now. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I'm going to be tagging the link to Ashran Teal in the description if I haven't already done so, I don't remember. Um, so um, go ahead and go to that site. Um, so in the Ochantil Facebook page, we're also streaming live actually at this camera, <laughs> which is the Ochantil Facebook page, and a little behind the scenes of what we've been doing. Go ahead and go go to that site to, to visit it. Um, but yeah, this is Dr. Kenneth Brown once again. I'll be posting this to YouTube as well. If you guys want to replay it sometime. So thank you very much for listening. And then the, once again, it's Ochantil, which is A T R A N T I L. Um, in Facebook Live, we do the video the other way. This is backwards, so it's like a mirror image. Oh, See okay. that? Yeah. So it doesn't, I don't know why Facebook does it. Facebook fix it. So. <laughs> All right, thanks very much for listening. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. And I hope you guys like this light setup we have here. <laughs> so that's, uh, it's, we have a little ring light and a little thing right here, but thank you for uh, hey, coming. Hey, dude, you're smart. <laughs> you're smart. What are you talking about? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Look for me on the news here at 1 o'clock. One o'clock. Oh, I should have said that to them.